and welcome to a new episode of the Willy Thistle Shop Update. It's good to be with you. I'm feeling really well, which is good, and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching the Shop Update. It's always good to do this and be with you, and I hope that you enjoy what I have to show you this time. The best way to keep in touch, other than watching the YouTube videos, would be listening to my podcast, um, following us on Instagram, and definitely signing up for our newsletter, which you can do at thewoollythistle.com. And remember, there are two L's in Wooly. I want to tell you right off the bat that my books are done for January and I was able to give 5% of our profits from all the sales in January to the World Wildlife Fund of Australia. And that money is going directly there to help um, the animals and their habitats. So thank you so much for all your help in raising uh, those funds. And you know, it wasn't a huge, but it was it was a very um, it was a good donation, and I'm really happy to make it on behalf of the Wooly Thistle. So let's announce the winner from last time. I was giving away a Wooly Thistle tote bag, which is a good size. This is the small one and a woolly thistle enamel pin which are available for sale in the shop and also this lovely notebook that i picked up when i was in shetland a couple of years ago so all of this is going to a lucky winner and the winner picked at random is lissa sarska so congratulations lissa you wrote your sweater is perfect. I'm happy you are recovering or recovered and back to podcasting. I would love to knit up something simple and so wearable as that in the Rama and soon. It is possible that the Petey Brown yarn is my favorite woolly thistle yarn, but I've only swatched with it as yet. You held that in front of the camera for a good long while and I may have drooled. <laughs> well, we can all relate to that. But right now I'm loving knitting up a sweater with both Samite and, blacker, uh, and Black Elephant BFL which sounds amazing. So the Samite was um, a yarn from Blacker and it had a Himsa silk in it and it was a blend. It was gorgeous, gorgeous yarn and they haven't made it since. And then Black Elephant is a hand dyer uh, in the UK and we have still a little bit left of her BFL and it's really lovely soft stuff. So I'm sure whatever you're knitting with that list is gonna be just gorgeous. So congratulations. We'll be sending this little prize out to you just as soon as possible. Well, first of all, send us an email uh, letting us know you got this and that you are the winner. You can just write winner in the subject line. And if you email that to info at thewoollythistle.com, we'll make sure to get that right out to you. So that's good, congratulations. So we should do another giveaway. I think what I'm going to give away is a $25 gift certificate. You can never go wrong with them. So I think that's what we're going to do. I just want to say thank you so much for watching. If I haven't said that already, I was just looking uh, through the comments. There was 169 comments right before I started recording this for the last episode, which I think is just phenomenal and such lovely comments too. Thank you very much for playing along and entering to win. It's really good to hear from you and uh, know a little bit about who's watching the Willy Thistle too. So thank you for that. And our numbers are growing. I think we're up to almost 3000 subscribers. So thank you for that. Um, and so please do subscribe to the Willy Thistle uh, podcast because um, that helps other people find it when it starts to grow. Uh, give us a thumbs up on the video and definitely leave a comment because to be entered for that $25 gift certificate, I'll ask you to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up for this video and definitely leave a comment. And th the people that do that will be in the running for the prize. Okay, enough about that. And actually in this bag, I'm gonna wait and we will have a guest on the podcast in just a little bit later. So I'm gonna hold off on what's in here. This is actually though a bag from Matter Root Main. She makes these gorgeous bags. I think she might be out of this uh, this base now though, this, this lovely, lovely color. I'm knitting on what's ever in here. <laughs> I'm sure you can guess what's in there. Um, and thank you so much for the sweater love for my FO last time. Uh, I'll put a picture of that here so that you know what I'm talking about. It was my, what I'm calling vanilla sweater. It's a recipe from Anne Budd's book, which I brought in. I don't sell it. I think you can get this easily on uh, Amazon. So this is Anne Budd's um, 
Knitter's Handy Book of Top Down Sweaters. I love this. You know, some of the pictures might look a little dated, but the information in here is timeless. And she does seamless yoke sweaters, raglan sweaters, set in sleeves and saddle shoulders. And so it gives you all the numbers you need to knit a top down sweater in one of those styles. And I find it works really, really well. I knit my son a sweater from this. I have adjusted many sweater patterns based on the numbers in here and my gauge. And then I just knit my vanilla sweater, which is a top down raglan. But I am planning to write up my recipe for the top down raglan sweater that I, that I made using this information. I'll call it my vanilla sweater because I think that's what it is. It's a very, very basic sweater and it's very wearable and it's really kind of a layering piece. At least that's how I made mine. You could make yours longer. It doesn't have to be shorter like I made mine. And it's one of these things that, you know, you can just take everywhere with you and knit on it. And next thing you know, you've got a sweater, seriously. Uh, it's a very easy knit and at the same time, it's also, because it's not fussy, it is teaching you about the construction of how to knit a sweater. So it's an excellent newbie sweater knitting um, thing to follow. So I, anyway, I am working on that and it will be available soon. So I started another one. And uh, this is knitted in Rama Finogarn again, because I really liked how that came out. And you can see here, this is my beginning of round stitch marker. I was given these, I think, by a lovely listener to the podcast some time ago. Uh, because I have an audio podcast. If you're just finding me here on YouTube, I have an audio podcast that's about five years old and I'm still recording it. And it comes out on the opposite week to this video podcast. You start with the neck uh, here and then you go around to here and then you knit back. So you're knitting back and forth, uh, doing increases to make, uh, make the shoulders. And you're also then doing increases to make the neckline. And when you get to a certain point, you increase on a whole bunch of stitches here, and then you start working in the round. And as you increase, uh, you get to about here. And then you have to put these sleeve stitches on waist yarn and then you cast on stitches under here and then you continue knitting in the round around here and around here and down and then you pick up the stitches that are live uh, off your waist yarn and then you knit your sleeve and you're done so it's a really um i think it's an educational knit for those of us who haven't knit a sweater before or I did hear from a lovely person who is very excited about this sweater and has three sweaters on her needles, but she hasn't finished any of them. And she thinks that's because she's, you know, she's trying stuff that's awfully complicated uh, for her level. So this, um, I defy this to be anyone. And I think if you get this under your belt, you can definitely move off. You can keep modifying this too. You can put waist shaping in, you can change the length of the sleeves, you can change the neckline. Um, and the length of the body, you can do a split hem. I mean, it's endless. And the beautiful thing about this sweater is it's eminently wearable. Um, I mean, we all love to knit on fancy complicated sweaters and I do too, and I will keep doing that. But, you know, there's nothing like having, you know, your daily driver as it were, to just throw on. So yeah, I think this is the new sock knitting, <laughs> which means, you know, we, we were always taking our socks everywhere, our vanilla socks. Uh, I'd knit mine in the car, I'd knit mine waiting in line for the bank or whoever or whatever, kids and things. There's no reason you can't be doing that on a sweater. There really isn't, so there you go. I'm excited about this. So yep, I couldn't wait to cast on. I, um, I'm gonna be, I'm just at the increasing stage. So you can see, there's the increases for maybe the front uh, sleeve and then around here are the opposite ones for the back sleeve, which you can sort of see. Yeah. And for those of us who have knit a bajillion fancy sweaters, you know, there's nothing like this for a palette cleanser. And I think that's what really I wanted to do with, with that when I started knitting it. I had actually two, two goals. I wanted to knit another sweater that I would just reach for over and over. And that was um, what I knitted. 
Um, and I also just wanted something to sort of cleanse the palette. Let me show you though, I haven't talked about the yarn, um, and I've talked about Rama before here, but let's see. Um, I knitted it in fingering white, which don't be scared. It's because I knit it on a US 6, uh, which for me gives me 20 stitches per four inches. So, and my first one that you saw a picture of there was knitted on this color, which is 4128. This is a lovely mauve uh, pink that's on a gray. Um, there's also a, quite a solid version of this too, if you wanted to do that. Although I don't know what number it is, but we could help you if you wanted to find it. Um, there's lots of different colors. This is just some random stuff. This is what I took home with me when I wanted to start number two. <laughs> and I actually ended up going with this, uh, this gray here which I think is 405, that's what I thought. So these are 50 gram balls, fingering white, it's the fennel garn. There's some beautiful colors. I would have done this one, but I already have a sweater that's very similar to this, so I, I had told myself back. This is just a couple of colors. There's a lot of colors you can choose from. Uh, this uh, yarn is reasonably priced too. I only use six balls to knit my sweater, which is 300 grams and I think that came out for the whole sweater to be about $60. And I still have most of the sixth ball left, which I have plans for, and I'll tell you about that soon too. Okay, so uh, just keep your ears up. I will notify you probably right here when I have that pattern or that recipe ready. We'll talk about what's in here soon. And what else am I knitting? I think that's it for now, really. I've gotten more monogamous over time, which is interesting. Um, I think I was always monogamous in my knitting and in, in life. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, so um, there was a time where I was starting to knit on lots of uh, different things at once. And I still can do that, but I'm just really enjoying knitting on one thing at a time right now, or maybe two, one or two. I should tell you about what I'm wearing. You may have seen this before. This is my seaweed slipover knitted in Jameson Spindrift from the pattern that was in Shetland Wool Week 2020. And I have made kits for these and they sell out every time and then we have to wait a long time to get more in. By the time you're watching this, they will have come in and there might be some left in the shop by the time you see this. But if you had at all shown any interest in wanting to know when this would be back in, you should have received emails about that letting you know. So let me show you. Sorry about the light. So this is a vest, it's straight up and down. There's no shaping in the sides, which is a look I'm enjoying right now. And uh, it goes all the way around. And so it's a great fun knit. I, this didn't take me too long at all. And it starts at the, I think it starts at the bottom and you just knit a tube, color work up, get to the sleeves, you create stick stitches here so that you can keep working in the round up to here. And then you cast on stick, sti stick stitches for the neck so that you can keep working in the round. So eventually, once you've finished your knitting, you cut, cut, and cut here. And then you attach your neck band and your sleeve bands. And then on the inside, uh, I didn't even I haven't even reinforced this because I know this yarn is meant for this and I didn't have to do anything at all. That is just live stitches cut. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> but you know, if you're using the right wool and Shetland wool certainly is the right wool for this, you should be well okay. And then the, the st stitches are here too. And here. Um, there you go. That's a good example. You can see the little color work you do across your stick stitches, which is one, 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 one color, one, the next color, back and forth. And, um, yeah, I just cut that. Uh, you don't want to trim it because then it is up close to where, you know, it's secured. And if something were to come off, Oh, look at me living so dangerously. But look, it's not coming off. But if it were, then it's still got a few stitches to get, you know, so that it doesn't go straight into your actual finished part. 
But yeah, look, all right? I am the convincer, okay? It's not gonna, it's not gonna run or go anywhere. Um, of course, you, you know, you hand wash your woolen garments anyway. Um, so that's gonna be a gentle process because when you wash wool, you basically fill up the water in the basin first. If you're gonna put in your uh, yarn soap, you put that in and you let it sink. You let the, the soap sink. You don't mix it all up. You don't make it all bubbly. You just lay it in there, let it sink. And then you put your finished object or your, or your you know, your worn piece on the top of the water. And that water can be warm to hot, honestly, but you don't want to agitate it. So what I do is I just push down gently. And I, I've had it hot enough where I'm like burning my hands a little. So you push down and then you leave it. And that wool will soak up all the water. Um, and the dirt, if there is dirt, will lift off. And so this is why you don't wash your woolens very often anyway. They're self-cleaning, first of all. Um, they're antibacterial too, I believe. And so when you do wash it, you just make it soak. You don't swish it around. You don't make anything bubbly. You just put it down. It soaks in the water and dirt will lift off. And quite often you'll see the water is, you know, milky color or gray. Um, and that's it. That's good. You know, that when you have that, you're closer to the source of where the wool came from. It's been minimally processed. So, and then you, you take it out. And what I do is I, um, I usually use one of these plastic tubs. I pour all the water out holding my piece up here, pour all the water out, and then I take it to my washing machine because I can run a spin cycle without adding any water. Caution and warning, do not do this if, you're gonna, if your washing machine is gonna throw in water, especially cold water. You don't want any water being added. But basically you put it on the spin cycle and from there um, all that excess water gets spun out and then I just lay it on a towel. And that's how I wash my stuff. And I generally will wash stuff only once or twice a year. That's the truth. So I definitely wash my stuff at the end of the woolly season so that it's going away nice and clean for the summer and when it's time to pull it out in the winter or the fall it's all lovely and clean and good to go. Right, let's do a shop update. That's what we're here for and I've got lots to tell you about. First off, it's free shipping for $99 or more, which um, I'm still watching the numbers to see if that um, is feasible for me and to see if that's a good number for you. I think it is. I think it's a good number for you, um, but it's not in any way, you know, forever. So use that up if you want to. So free shipping on orders in the US up to, uh, from $99 and up. I want to tell you about Woolly Mammoth Natural Sock Yarn. That is being dyed for us as I speak. And we're very excited. This will be our first time getting her natural sock yarn. We have had Woolly Mammoth here a couple of times before and she is a favorite. Um, her natural sock yarn is 100% natural wool. There is no nylon. It's not super washed. It's just beautiful sock yarn. And her yarn is featured in 52 Weeks of Socks by Lina, which I have my copy here. You know this book and so there is a sock pattern in here using her yarn and also there is a sock yarn in here uh not in here her sock yarn is also used in making stories magazine number three which will be coming out soon and i'll be telling you about fairly soon but yes um this is a beautiful book we are still I think by the time this goes live, we will have received our second round of pre-orders and those will have shipped out and we'll be working on the third round. And the third round, um, we are open now and may still be open when you see this. So check it out if you're still interested in buying this. This is a nice big, heavy two and a half pound book. And um, these pre-orders should be coming in around about the beginning of March. So it's not a long wait. They are they're getting them out to us nice and quickly. So yeah, so um, Woolly Mammoth Sock Yarn is coming and I will keep you posted about that. And then Exmoor Sock Yarn from John Arben Textiles. I've been telling you about that. I love this yarn. I've told you before that I'm very sentimentally attached to it. It's one of the first yarns that I sold at the Woolly Thistle. And it's a sock yarn that has nylon in it um, and has uh, Exmoor uh, Blueface Lester 
and I'm going to check my facts if I if, if, <laughs> if that's not right I'm going to put it down here but it's a really nice yarn and I can't wait to see it I'm not sure how much they've reinvented the actual yarn itself I'll find that out but they have done a whole new palette of colors and that'll be lovely so um, that is coming hopefully we'll have that before the end of March and let's see what else we have daughter of a shepherd coming as well and I have some here to show you this will be going in shortly this is our first time stocking uh, daughter of a shepherd and I'm really happy that we have it we have her ram jam here which comes in five natural colors. This is lovely. This is really uh, fluffy, springy, bouncy yarn. And let's see what her label says. It's 100% wool from mixed breeds, worsted weight, and you get 126 yards uh, in 50 grams. She recommends 45 millimeter needle, which is a US six to eight and the gauge is 18 stitches over four inches. So a worsted weight, which we never get much of from the UK because they don't tend to have this weight as much as we do here. I think the only other worsted weight yarn I have would be Old Centrum from Sweden. So this is a reasonably priced yarn. So I would check this out if you're at all interested. So we have that. And then I'm really, really excited about her broom. And when I open this, Oh. <sighs> so good so this is her broom so broom is daughter of a shepherd's um, beautiful yarn it comes in four ply and DK and you can actually see these are different slightly different shades so let's talk about the four ply first it's all natural of course and it's a hundred percent wool of which 50% is Hebridean 25% is Swarbles or Zwarbles, and 25% is Exmoor Blue Face. And this results in quite a um, drapey yarn, I would say. Uh, for four, it's a four ply, which is a fingering weight, and for that you're getting 437 yards, so that is spot on. Uh, sort of a sock yarn weight, though I wouldn't use this for socks necessarily. 24 stitches over four inches on three millimeter needles. Yeah, and it smells good. It smells delicious, very sheepy. <laughs> so that I'm excited about. And then this is the DK version. And let me tell you, you get 237 yards per 100 grams. Right, so these are 100 gram skeins and you're getting really good yardage for them. Um, I think these are drapey and very wooly they're quite nice and soft i haven't knit with them yet but we will have these here in the shop uh, for as long as they are here so if you're interested in this i think that that you should jump on that as soon as you know and as soon as i let you know when it's in the shop um, daughter of a shepherd is a uh, a girl called rachel atkinson and her dad is a shepherd and so she grew up with sheep and she made a pledge to um, help reinvigorate British wool uh, because it was getting just, you know, people were paying the shepherd and the farmer just hardly any money for their wool. And she is making her business all about reinvigorating that wool industry. And it's, you know, fantastic. And this is her book here called Volume One Beginnings. And she has a beautiful logo and you can see in here that every copy we have has been signed by Rachel. So if you buy this book from us, you will get a signed copy, which is really nice. And we have a few of these. So this um, actually would make a very nice uh, little set, wouldn't it? And I think the Ram Jam is gonna be good for color work. It's all natural. Um, I could see a sweater or a cowl or mittens or all kinds, you know, anything really. This, this is uh, fun stuff. And it's worsted weight, so it's a quick knit too. Also new to the shop and going in soon, I have um, been in touch with Knit Sonic, Felix, and she um, has sent us our supply of books. So we have a Knit Sonic source book back in stock and the Colorwork Playbook and the Colorwork Playbook Companion. So if you were waiting for those, those are back. And she's also been working 
on a series of cards that I've ordered for the shop too. And I love these. These are highlighting diversity and all the people in the world that uh, love to knit. Here she is knitting um, her polka dot scarf that uh, Knitsonic um, designed. And that's a great, oh, that's a great JNS stash buster right there. Superfly. If you've ever met Knitsonic, you might have seen her in this dress. So that is awesome. And then here we have a lady knitting on um, her floral giant shawl, which is beautiful, lovely colors. And of course, this is very knit sonic. Here we have her audio recorder. And if you don't know who knit sonic is, um, she is an amazing woman who I find <laughs> totally inspiring. And I first found her uh, because she had an audio podcast um, and she's a sound professional. And her audio podcasts were just filled with sounds that you wouldn't normally hear, but that were very evocative. Um, and it turns out she designs knitwear as well and is very popular from Britain, from England, from Reading in England. Yeah, so just lovely uh, cards. So these will be available in the shop soon, along with her books, which we just popped in. We did get Blacker in, so we have uh, replenishments of Blacker Gotland. However, the mist didn't come, and I have to find out if they have any mist. That's the gray base that is undyed, and we definitely want to get that if they have any more, so we're working on that. Uh, we have St. Kilda, which is their soy and uh, Shetland and Bori yarn, which is just beautiful. And we have Lioness, Mohair, Tamar, Swan, all of those, all of our um, basic blacker yarns are in good supply. So go check that out if, if you have uh, that on your shopping list, they're in now. By Hand 11 for New Hampshire and Vermont, we sold out and we ordered more and I'm having a run of bad luck with my um, deliveries right now. The post office say that it was delivered and it shows it's being delivered but we didn't get it. And unfortunately, when that happens, we're stuck. So I will be ordering more. More will be coming and uh, we'll get those in the shop to you right away because I know several of you are waiting for copies and I want to get them to you. I thought they were coming. Uh, we should have more Spindrift in the shop uh, by the time you're seeing this. Uh, we're doing it in the form of kits. So that's all of Marie Wallen's kits. The seaweed sweater kit as well uh, should be in there. Uh, we will have sent emails out to everybody who is waiting for that to come in so that they uh, would get first notice. But if you're interested in looking, go to the shop. There may still be a kit or two or three or four still available. I just never know. And we'll be ordering more of that, of course, as well. And we might reconsider doing another uh, single ball uh, weekend at some point. We did that last month and it was great, but I just have to wait and see what kind of stock I have left after the kits go. We do sell a yarn set for this along with the Shetland Wool Week from 2020 because uh, that's where you find the pattern for this. So um, look for those if you're interested in knitting this. This is such a comfy knit with no sleeves. It's really, and it's a fast knit, you know, for color work. It's pretty fast. Okay, let's do a quick Marie Wallen update. We have her books Gentle and Wildwood. Those feature her British breeds and those are in stock in pretty good supply right now. Then we have Meadow and Shetland and those books feature her uh, designs in Jameis and Spindrift. And for now, those are in pretty good supply as well. I just wanted to bring you up to date as well on British breeds. We are waiting for Quince and Wood, the two colors that are completely out of stock they're being spun up and hopefully actually by the time you hear this they will have been spun up and off to the finishers and balled up um, and hopefully on their way to us so they will go in the shop as soon as possible and when they do we will open up the kits again for the beautiful uh, primrose sweater and uh, the various different yarn sets we have from her uh, books that feature her British breeds. We are currently out of stock of Maya's mittens as well as winter knits from Scandinavia but both of those will be back in stock soon. We only have a few copies of this left and hopefully we'll get more of those when, when they're needed. This is Selbu Mittens of course which is a wonderful book. 
Wonderful. Uh, I'm here with Maggie who works at the shop and is a dear friend and she is our knitting coordinator and I wanted her to come in today because many of you all know her from the Ravelry group and our cows and she's here to chat with me about the cow and how it's going. Hi Maggie. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so how, what are you knitting on in the mitten so, cow? I am knitting the winter walnut min mittens by Virginia Tatler Reimer. 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 Sorry. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Um, I didn't do the thumb. I've got one done and oh. one almost all the way done. Beautiful. Um, Let's... I'm knitting them out of hand spun, but... Yeah, Maggie is a, a hand spinner extraordinaire, and that is lovely. Um, what a pretty pattern. It is a really pretty pattern. Yeah. I think it originally called for the Blacker Shetland. Oh, is it DK then? I, yeah. Okay. It's a DK. Yeah. So I thought I'd get them done faster. Yeah. Um, but How I'm, far along are you? So, yeah. yeah. Those are going to be lovely. Did I you? I think if I had a couple of hours. Yeah. Where I'm not distracted. Yeah. Did you uh, spin both yarns? I did. Well, actually, no. I'm a liar. Um, <laughs> the the cream colored yarn my friend Melody spun. Okay. And I believe I bought it from her at Rhinebeck one year. Are they breed specific or generic? Um, the beige one or not. I don't know what the beige one is that Melody spun. The brown one is a border lesser. Oh, nice. It looks like it is a natural, though. It doesn't... It is. The, yes, it is natural. Yeah, really, okay. really pretty. So. so you just have thumbs to do, and then you're done? Or well, you've got to finish Yeah, that, so but. just the top two inches and thumbs, and it's a great pattern. What's the name of the pattern again? It is the Winter Walnut Mitten. So I am knitting this one here. I've gotten one mitten done except for the thumb. And I have the cuff for the second one done. And this is the um, spruce sprig. And it's in the book, uh, Maya's Swedish Mittens. Right here, there, aren't those pretty? And uh, yes, these are knit in Letlopi. I'm breaking all my own rules and I apologize, but I'm still doing it's it. It's trouble. <laughs> I will say it looks big, but I'm putting it on because it's really not that big. Yeah. For some reason when you hold it up, it looks gigantic. Big. I think Letlopi is hairy for sure, but it's also very soft. And I think people get scared that, that, that it's just gonna be so itchy all the time. But it's, really um, not. it's not. It's smooth. Um, it's got a sheen to it as well, I think. So, yeah, I'm going to enjoy these. I think these will be good. I think, too, if you're not sure about Let Lopey, Mittens is a nice way to start with it. Definitely. Yeah. So, how's the Mitten Cal going? Because we're recording this a few, quite a few days before we go live with it. Um, the Mitten Cal's been going really great. It's such a chatty group. Uh, once again, we have a lot of knitters who are saying it's their first cal ever, oh, which this, is always yeah. a lot of fun. Yep. We're about a week into it now, yeah. Yeah. and already there are some finished mittens. Yeah, some, yeah. People, some people are so fast. Obsessed with Don't mittens. let that intimidate you. No, you know, all we want you to do is knit with us, so it's not really about how fast you do it, although, hooray to you if you do. Yes, it's always really motivating to me to see um, how many pairs. There are some people, yeah. there was one year, I know, I think it was last year, where somebody knit at least three or four pairs of mittens easily. Crazy. Um, In six weeks. Yes. Color work. Yes. Yeah. And not DK weight. <laughs> and not worsted or let low pee weight. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's great. And everybody's really friendly and chatty. And yeah. if you have any questions, just pop in and yeah. ask them and you'll ask. get multiple responses yeah. usually. Yeah. yeah. And um, the prize fairy, by the time you're seeing this, the prize fairy should have been in and uh, sprinkled the prize fairy dust, which is one of my favorite things to do <laughs> ever. So it's going well. This is our fifth this mitten cow. This is our cow. fifth mitten cow. Amazing. And it feels like... This year feels much bigger. There's more participation. I think there's been more people posting on Instagram as well, including designers, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, we have some great discounts, and some of them might still be going. Yeah. Some of the discounts run through the end of the, the knit along. If you see somebody knitting mittens that you're like, ooh, I really like that, um, check and see. Yeah, and even if you're not knitting along with us, it's worth checking out our, um, our feed on Ravelry because you will get so much inspiration and see uh, lots of different mittens being knitted up. And we'd love you to post any mittens you've knit to that Ever. at any point in time. Yeah. Because um, it's just fun to see. Yeah, and it's great for ideas. So yeah. there are so many mittens in the world and that's a good thing and we should just keep knitting mittens for sure. So that's the Mitten Cow. Please join us. There's still plenty of time. Like like Maggie said, we're only 
a week and a half, maybe two weeks by the time you see this, yeah. into it. And it's uh, got another at least four weeks to run. And even if you don't finish, that doesn't mean anything. It just means that you're not eligible for prizes, but you are more than welcome to knit along with us. Although I think technically in our rules, if you read post one, yes. if you are one and three quarters way through a fingering weight mitten, you can still post in the FO thread and, and be, be eligible. eligible. So knit along with us and just enjoy the social aspect of it. Um, I think it's a really positive group. Although, let's talk about the one little snag we had this year. <laughs> People were posting uh, lovely photos, but they were including the whole, quite often the whole um, chart from the mitten. We yeah. can't do, of paid, of paid patterns, and right. we can't do that. You know, there is some uh, internet etiquette when it comes to uh, sharing your patterns and what you're knitting. You can't show the work product of the designer. Uh, because that's their work product and we don't want to just you know give that away for free so be right. very careful of that when you're posting yeah and yeah. if you're not sure you can always send a private message to either group yeah or I. yeah but you know we just want to be mindful of that tell us what you're wearing um, I am wearing the tree light sweater by Jennifer Steingast. Isn't it gorgeous? And you knitted it in? In Let Lopi. Let Lopi. She's wearing a sweater in Let Lopi. And Let how Lopi. does it feel? It, I don't find it itchy at no. all. No. No. I'm um, not. Occasionally if I'm wearing my jacket too, um, some of the hairs will kind yeah. of poke through. But if I just, just like this, I'm really yeah. comfortable and yeah. not, I can't quite wear it totally next to skin. Mm -hmm. um, but I always wear t-shirts and things under heavy yeah. sweaters anyway. But I've seen you wear your Felix out of like yeah. Lopey with yeah, like that's a true. shirt underneath, but not, not yeah. whereas um, I wore my Felix last night and I had a t-shirt on underneath and it. And you felt it? And my arms, I was like, I'm a little itchy. Yeah. But, um, but no, I love, I think I wear this sweater. Is it um, is it lightweight or does it feel like a heavy sweater to wear? Because it's, um, it it's, does not feel heavy at all. So often cold so this is kind of lovely. yeah yeah um, I know it's like a warm hug isn't it it, if is, you take it, it off, feels you... very lightweight yeah. and it's easy to wear and yeah um yeah it's, it's holding up really well I think I've only did you ever knit anything in Flotilope I knit the Idaho shawl oh yeah yeah, yeah. and whenever that's around the house I, I it's so big on me that I usually just wear it around the house but yeah. um I'm, I'm not a tall woman <laughs> <laughs> um but whenever I have it out, my daughter will steal it. Mm -hmm. um, and she even says, it's so light and fluffy and it doesn't, it just feels like air. Yeah. But she's like, you wrap it up and you're immediately warm. It's yeah, like you're a snugged. big woolly hug. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's talk about um, the other thing that you're involved with helping me organize is Katie Green Beans pop-up shop, which is going to be April 4th. We're selling tickets for that. They're just $10 a person. And for that, you get admission and you also get a woolly thistle tote bag with some swag in it, which we're working on yeah. and <laughs> that's down to me and uh, yeah so we have three time slots set up we've got 10 to 12 and there's just a few tickets left in that um, that time slot and then 12 to 2 there's just a few tickets left for that but I tell you 2 to 4 right now it's wide open we do have some people coming then but we have quite a lot of tickets and right now we're working on all the logistics um, as an online yarn shop we are not set up for customers so we are trying to come up with ways to prettify it up a little bit and make yeah. it work for people coming in so we're working on that it's a lot of work and we're enjoying it um, I'm kind of looking forward to it you know you're going to meet lots of the team from the Willie mm -hmm. Thistle that day and we are working on a document to send out to those of you who are coming that will um, give you lots of information about other local yarn stores here and different things that you can do in the Upper Valley so you know come visit us for uh, there's some other things happening that day too and depending how it goes we'll see about maybe doing other events here too this is really a first event and um, testing the waters yes. with it so thanks so much for coming in Maggie thanks for having me yeah I think that is all the news I have for you except that I found this <laughs> I found this at a junk shop I was at recently just one man size uh, sock sock blocker it was called a sock stretcher on the label and it's got a pointy toe so I thought maybe I would hang this up on my wall somewhere because it's far too big for any socks I would knit I don't think even well I should try Jay's socks on this actually I'll do that but yeah the things you find right and the things you get excited about these days when you're when you're a knitter with a capital K and I think most of us are aren't we 
Okie dokie then. I think that's all I have for you this time. I hope that you enter our drawing for a $25 gift certificate to the Woolly Thistle. And to do that, just make sure you follow the Woolly Thistle's uh, YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and leave a comment below. And we'll select a prize winner before the next episode. So I think all that's left to say is if you go out, take your knitting, take care, and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.